This is the EZ Pedaler T350 for 2015. Several things have been updated about this bike, but in general, it's kind of a value comfort commuter type of thing, you know, urban neighborhood type of electric bike. Uh, as you can see, it's got this sort of step through frame design that's reinforced right here. Uh, so it feels fairly, you know, fairly strong and stuff. It comes in, in this sort of one average size and uh, might be, you know, good for someone who, who isn't too concerned about power or speed. 350 watt geared hub motor is what's really driving this bike. Um, and that's decent, you know, it's mounted in the front wheel, whereas when you pedal, you're, you're kind of turning the rear wheel. So they like to say it's an all wheel drive bicycle. You know, that's only if you're pedaling and really putting in the effort. Uh, this bike does have pedal assist as well as throttle mode. I like that it's got an internally geared hub in the back, Shimano Nexus, but it's only three speeds. Okay, so there's a fairly big leap between those three, three pedal speeds. So at the low end, you're pedaling pretty fast and that's gonna you know, be easier to climb hills. And at the high end, you know, you're pedaling pretty slow. That's gonna help you to maintain a higher speed. So, you know, it works. It keeps this thing clean and relatively affordable. I think it's like 18, 1900 bucks. Um, and for that, you know, you're getting, you're getting a decent deal. Like Easy Peddler, I think most of their, their outlets are on the East Coast of the United States. Um, this is the kind of bike that, you know, you might compare to an Easy Motion or something that's like a step up, but is gonna cost uh, another thousand dollars or something. And you, you look at it and you're like, okay, well you got the fenders, it's these plastic fenders, but they are full length and they've got these nice rubber mud flaps. Um, you know, they've got a single strut here. It's not really adjustable without tools or anything, but it does a decent job. It hasn't been rubbing, although this is a, a brand new bike that I'm looking at here. It's got a suspension fork, but there's no lockout and it's really pretty basic. You're not getting a whole lot of travel still better than nothing and that combines with this you know extra thick padded saddle with these sort of rubber bumpers it's a fairly comfortable ride and you can see the the handlebars kind of this gull wing swept back so when you ride it you're you're looking you know up and forward you're not really having to lean too far forward you also have an adjustable stem and you can see it's it's mounted like almost straight up for me right now because i'm a little bit taller and you know it feels good i've also got the seat post you know really high up so that my i'm hitting my full stride when i pedal but if you look you know this isn't very narrow on the nose here so if you were pedaling this for miles and miles it's just you know it's it's a little bit heavier it's 54 pounds it's not terrible considering all the the accessories but you know what i'm trying to say is this is kind of the middle of the line type of bike it's a value bike right i do like that they've got a quick disconnect here for the front uh power for the for the motor there isn't quick release on the front or the rear wheels, which means you definitely need tools or take this to a shop if you're, if you're getting help. Um, the, the wheel size is 24 by 1.95, so it's sort of these hybrid tires. They're a little bit softer, kind of squishier. They should roll fairly efficiently, you know, if you're on concrete or even a little bit of trails, but this is mostly an on-road kind of a bike. I like the reflective sidewalls. Um, you know, it's got the, even got a chain guard here in the back. Aluminum alloy pedals with a rubber grip, you know, and here's the Nexus, uh, kind of the, the cable lead that you can adjust. This one's doing pretty well. I tried the C or X350. It's like the folding version of this bike before, and it needed a little bit of adjustment, but it's fairly easy to do. And when you get it from the shop, just, you know, shift through those gears, try it out uh, before you take it home. The kickstand on this works pretty well, but I, I want to note that, you know, when you, when you actually kick it up like this, it's still pretty low to the ground. So if you're going off curbs or next to low objects, sticks and stuff, it can actually, you know, collide. Um, also the brake system in the front, it's kind of a V-brake, traditional cable brake that works pretty well. In the back, it's a band brake um, and it's just a little bit slower. It's not quite as tight and you know, there's no disc brakes or anything here. So again, that's part of the trade-off in terms of uh, performance. Nice rack, maximum weight 25 kilograms, that's about 55 pounds, and it's even got the pannier blockers, but you'll notice a lot of, it's, it's bolt-on, there's a lot of extra kind of bolts to get this right. Um, so over time you might want to check those, make sure they're not starting to rattle or come loose. I love that it has front and rear lights, but the rear light is actually standalone, so you can see there's a switch right there and there's batteries inside. That is a little bit of a bummer because over time, as you're riding this bike, maybe you're you know, you, you turn it on, the front light runs off that main battery pack. You're going on a ride downtown, you get home, you turn off the bike and you think, oh, all the lights are off, everything's good. Well, that backlight requires that you 
you know, turn it off manually. And if you forget, then the batteries can start to wear out. And that's sort of a bummer. I guess we should discuss performance a little bit more here. Um, you know, whenever you've added a bunch of weight to the front wheel, you get kind of unsprung weight. And that means that you have weight that isn't sprung. It's not part of the suspension system. This bike has a lot of it, uh, given that it has this, you know, the hub motor built right in. Whoa, boy, we lost our kickstand there. So having unsprung weight, that just means that the suspension is going to have to work harder and the performance is going to be a little bit slower. You know, there's, there's more energy moving up and down. So on cars, motorcycles, bicycles, you always want less unsprung weight. So again, that's a performance trade-off. Also, I've noticed that when I steer this bike, you know, there's a little bit more, I guess, momentum happening. Like I'm turning and I just, you know, it's, it's not terrible, but there is more weight there. Um, so thankfully it is a smaller geared motor versus something that's like gearless. And you do hear it like a little bit when you're going. And as I mentioned before, it's a 24 inch wheels. So those are actually slightly smaller than traditional 26. And that brings the whole bike a little bit lower to the ground, which is kind of nice uh, for, you know, a more petite rider. I think that's, it's pretty good. Let's talk a little bit more about the battery. Love that it's mounted kind of center and low on the frame. And I think the control box and everything is in here. You can see the cables sort of run along the bottom of the frame, but are integrated. You can see here as well, they kind of run through the frame. Some of them do at least. And that cleans things up a little bit and helps you avoid snags and uh, problems that way. The battery pack itself is 36 volt, 10 amp hour. Lithium battery cells should be fairly decent. Um, I did try to open it up and just confirm whether or not there were Samsung or some other brand. It, it's, it's hard to tell, but I did weigh out and it's about seven pounds. So that's heavier than the new high energy dense um, cells that I've, I've weighed on other bikes. They have like 5.5 pound batteries that are about the same size. So, you know, that's part of how they keep it cheaper is a little bit, um, not necessarily worse. It's just they aren't as energy dense. So, you know, the bike's gonna weigh a little bit more. The battery's a little bit, little bit bigger. Uh, but it's pretty well protected in this kind of aluminum case. I think this is called a silverfish design uh, in the industry. They kind of call that. So if you wanted to take it off, you would push this in, turn it all the way to unlock. And then there's this cool seat thing. So the seat pops up like that. Very cool. And then you can just slide the battery pack up, right? So pretty cool the way they've got that set up. It's even got a little battery charge indicator, but I think you have to turn it on Let's see, there we go. Is that, nope. All the way to on. There we go, now we can see how full it is. When you do turn it on, the battery and everything is, is powering the system. You're ready to turn on the display, but one downside is you can't take the key out. So, you know, I comment on this a lot with bikes where maybe you have a keychain, it's hanging down and it's clinking against the frame and, you know, your legs as you pedal, they're kind of in that area. It's not terrible, but it's definitely a con in my mind. Okay, so we're all set up. Battery's charged, motor's ready, everything's connected. And I do want to highlight these nice connectors. These are actually color-coded and everything. Um, it's a real nice little, little setup. And they've got them kind of linked together. I actually kind of like this more than the, the plastic wrapper stuff. It just looks clean to me. Got our little bell. Here's the display. It does swivel a little bit, but right now it's pretty tight. So I think it's kind of fixed at the moment. We hold power for a second see it just comes to life we've got our battery charge level at six dots right now our speed our odometer down there and i think you can kind of cycle through that uh, yeah by hitting power again so we got our trip distance uh, voltage current and time like a clock so that's cool this bike's been ridden about two miles in its entire life that's kind of neat and then of course the up and down. But before we get there, that CUR, that actually turns on the light. So you can see the light there. And again, only the front light. <laughs> so if you want the rear light, you gotta walk back here and click it on. I am not gonna do that because it's daytime and I don't wanna forget. Um, okay, so we could take it all the way down to zero assist and then this becomes like a throttle only bike. You know, you do that and the tire spins, it's pretty sweet. And then you can arrow up into one of five levels of assist. The top speed on this bike is about 20 miles per hour. And I've noticed that in the highest level of assist, depending on the terrain that I'm on and, and stuff, there is, can be a little bit of a, you know, it can kind of spin out a little bit uh, because it is torquey. You know, it's, 
it's a decent little motor and I don't weigh very much. I'm like 135 pounds. Um, might be able to demonstrate that. So I'm on the bike. There's the trigger throttle over there on the right. I'm gonna do a quick handoff. There we go. And then, there we go. Not too bad. I'm gonna go off road. I hear everything jingling around. Oh, now I'm gonna power up this hill over here. One of the things I really love is that, you know, right now we're in pedal assist mode, but I'm able to still use the throttle. The way they've got it set up, there's like a nice override. This hill isn't too steep, you know, and it's gotten us up to like 16 miles per hour. That's nice, no pedaling involved. I estimate, you know, the range on something like this is maybe 25, 30 miles, depending on what level of assist you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and shift into that highest gear. This is the pedal cadence. Do a quick brakes test here. Yeah, it works pretty well. Not bad at all. I'm gonna do a, a cadence test real quick here. Um, this has a 12 magnet cadence sensor. So you can see that right through there. See those little silver dots? Those are magnets. There are 12 of them. The older version of this bike, I think it only had like five. So it was just less responsive. You'd have to pedal a little bit longer before the motor would kick in. And then when you stopped pedaling, the bike would keep going a little bit longer. The new version is a lot better. So again, I'm in turbo mode right now or the highest level. Not bad, not bad, yeah, very, very responsive, much more than before. I think that's about it. Um, yeah, you know, that's the Easy Peddler T350. For the full write-up on this and some of the other easy peddler bikes for 2015, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, if you get this bike and you wanna add something maybe I missed, just do a video response or you know chat it up in the forums. I'll see you there.